Hey, Grandma. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the amazing birthday present. I really liked it. Oh, you mean it's already arrived for you? Yeah, you sent me that really, really cute wallet, right? I just wanted to let you know that I love it. My old one was getting so worn down, so it's just perfect. Oh, Dot, well, I'm just so glad that you like it. I spent a long time trying to pick out a good one. Oh, so that's why the last time that you came over, you were asking me about what my favorite color was and all of that. Oh, <laughs> yes, that is correct. I tried to ask around at work about what might be the best thing to get. But then the more I thought about how much you'd be using it, the more it made sense just to ask you. Well, I really do like it, so thank you so much again for that. But I just hope that it wasn't too expensive. I mean, it seems really, really fancy, and I guess I just feel a bit bad about getting something this nice. Well, you are growing up and getting bigger, so sometimes it's okay for a grandma to splurge. And you decided to splurge on me? Oh, thank you so much. You really are the best, Grandma. Of course, the pleasure is all mine, especially since I understand that you'll be going to college next year. I just wanted you to have something nice that would be able to serve you when you started there. Again, you just did such a great job. The wallet is really, really cute. And I promise that I'm working hard to study now so that I can get into a good school. So then, does that mean that you already know where you're going to apply to? Or are you still trying to figure out where you think you might want to go? Yeah, I already know where I want to go now. But my parents told me it's not going to be easy to get in. But either way, that's where I want to go. I see. Well, knowing you, I am sure that you'll be able to do anything you set your mind to. So just know that your grandma is always there cheering you on. Of course, and I know that that's going to mean even more studying in the future, but... For now, I really think I can do this. Although, I would be lying if I said that I wasn't just a little worried about it. Well, it sounds to me like you're setting a great goal for yourself. But the first step in achieving that is believing that you can achieve it. You're right. I am going to do my best, but I also have my part-time job to worry about, so I'm just so busy with that, too. H hold on a second. I didn't know that you were working as well. Shouldn't you be more focused on finishing high school and doing the college applications? I mean, I wish that I could do all that, but I still need to be able to pay my phone bills and have some spending money for the month. Oh, is that so? I just really think that you should be resting. You know, if you wanted to, I could pay for your phone bill until you finish applying to your schools. You don't have to go and do something like that, Grandma. Besides, I just know that my parents would be mad if they found out. They are always telling me that I shouldn't run to you to try and solve all my problems. But I really do want to do this for you if it will help you succeed. Besides, it's not like you come to me for everything already. Oh, maybe I'll try and talk to Philippe. You mean my dad? But I already told him that I'd work hard on my job and my studies. He said I had to do that if I wanted his help to go to college. And since it's a pretty nice college, I know that I'm going to need some help. So I, I think that's why my dad banned me from asking you for help. I'm terribly sorry to say this, Dot, but... That doesn't make one bit of sense to me. But let me try and talk to your father. I'm not sure what all the details are, but I'm sure we can work something out. And if he wants to get mad, then he can go ahead and try getting mad at me. Thank you so much, Grandma. You really are the best. Do you know that? I really have been wanting to focus more on school and applications, so this is amazing. Oh, sweetie, of course. It really is my pleasure to try and help you. I know that we don't live as close to each other anymore, but that just makes me want to do it all the more. And if you ever need anything or any kind of help, please don't hesitate to ask. Hey, Mom, sorry I didn't look at my phone until now, but did you call me yesterday? 
Philippe, I did not call you yesterday. I called you two days ago now. Oh, really? Has it already been two days? Well, I'm sorry about that. Things have been crazy here. But what is it you wanted to talk to me about? It's about Dot's part-time job. You do realize that she's about to graduate high school, right? Don't you think you should give her a break and let her focus on applying to colleges? I really think you should let her take a break from her job. Wait, what? Are you serious? Why would I do that? I'm sure she's able to study and work at the same time. Philippe, what are you talking about? Dot should be doing everything she can to raise her chance of getting into the school she wants. And that means that she should be focusing on graduating with good grades and writing a good application. Well, if she wants to quit her job, then that's up to her, but I am not going to be giving her any money. I mean, I'm not just some ATM, you know. Well, you don't have to worry about that. I'll be paying for Dot's cell phone. And I'll give her a little bit of spending money, too. Oh, really? Well, okay, if that's what you want to do, then I don't have anything to say about it. Well, okay then. I'm glad that you and I were able to have this little talk. Just pass all this along to Dot, then, and tell her not to worry about money. Although, don't you think that you're treating your granddaughter just a little bit better than you are me? Philippe, let's be honest with each other. You're a bit of a bum. Hey, come on, what's that supposed to mean? I'm not a bum! Well, we can agree to disagree on that. But that being said, don't you think you're being just a bit too strict with Dot? Of course I'm being strict with her! Do you have any idea how expensive things have been getting lately? But of course work isn't giving me any kind of raise or anything, so that turns me into having to run the house more rigidly. I know that, but even your daughter is working. Surely things can't be that tight. Yes, Dot is working, but I think you can hardly say that she's earning money. But I'm sorry that we can't all live as luxuriously as you. I guess you must be having the time of your life living off of what Dad left you after he kicked the bucket. What are you talking about, son? You know that you got money from your father as well. But you mishandled it, and that's on you. You didn't have to be living this way. Okay, sure, I might have done some less than smart things with the money, but still. The point is that your daughter shouldn't be having to pay for your mistakes. So how about you start saving up money and thinking about her future a little more seriously? I can't believe that you're really lecturing me like this after all these years. But anyways, do you think you could help paying for Dot's school? Do you have any money saved up for her college at all, Philippe? I had some, but then I had to pay for bills and a bunch of other things. Heck, I had to buy a new car, but I do have some money saved up for her. But I don't think I'm gonna just use it on her college tuition. Well, I would think that a good father would have done a better job preparing for all of this. I'm doing my best, Mom, don't you get that? Besides, I know that Dot is trying really hard and it's not like I don't want to send her to college. Then I guess I really don't have any other choice, do I? I would hate to crush Dot's dreams. But I suppose you asked me because you knew that I couldn't say no to this. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, you got me there. <laughs> this isn't funny, Philippe. You really need to start doing better. If you keep this up, you're not only going to cause trouble for yourself, but for Dot as well. I mean, you are working like you should be, right? Yeah, of course I'm working. Just like Dot is going to school and studying, I'm putting in my work. Well, if you have a job and you're working hard, then be a good father and save up for your daughter. I told you that I'm doing what I can, but it's not that easy, Mom. But I'm doing everything that I can, and now you can work for Dot, too. <laughs> I really am starting to get sick of dealing with you, you know that. And if I find out that you've pulled any more of this ridiculous crap again, I am cutting you off. I already told you I would do this, but now I really will if you cause your wife and daughter any more trouble. Okay, okay, geez, I get it. Just please pay for Dot's school, that is, if she even gets into college. <laughs> oh, I'm not worried about that one bit. I know that Dot is a hard-working young woman. She'll do what she sets her mind to, I just know it. Hey there, sweetie. Were you calling me just a moment ago? 
I'm sorry, I was still at work and I had to wait until my break to pick up. You are the worst, Grandma! How could you do this to me? Dot, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you could be talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Grandma. You're making me send you money and now I can't go to college? Send me money? What in the world are you talking about? You're not sending me money. I already know the truth, Grandma. You got scammed by someone and now you're in debt and need help to get out of it. You think that I got scammed into losing a bunch of money? I, I really have no idea about any of this. And I've never once been scammed in my entire life. Dad told me that you would pretend not to know what I was talking about. He said you didn't want anyone to know. Dot, I'm really sorry about this, but I have no idea about any of what you're telling me. I'm not receiving money from anyone, and I certainly haven't been scammed. And just what does this have to do with you not being able to go to college? You told me the other day that you had gotten in and you were so happy. But then you got scammed and now you don't have any more money, so that's why I'm having to send my money to you. And because of that, I can't save up anything for when I do go to college. Dad even took the money that I didn't already have saved up. Wait, what? Are you serious? Did your dad really do that? Yes, he did. You've ruined my future. You've ruined the rest of my life. I was working so hard, just like I had promised you, and now it's all over. Dot, please listen to me. I am telling you that I wasn't scammed, I'm not in debt, and I'm not getting money from anyone. In fact, I'm the one who's been paying your tuition this whole time. Wait, what? But I thought that I was paying for my school through a student loan that I would have to work off. You mean you thought that you were going to be paying for college all by yourself? Well, yeah, of course that's what I thought was happening. You mean that your dad hasn't said a word to you about what he and I talked about? Hold on a second. I'm going to have to try calling him. We need to sort this out. Hey, Mom, do you have a sec to talk? I just wanted to text you about some things that have been on my mind. Oh, hello, son. Yes, actually, I was just thinking about reaching out to you as well. Oh, I see, and uh, why is that? Uh, what did you want to talk to me about? No, no, you tell me what you were wanting to say to me first, please. Well, okay, this is kind of difficult to say, but Dot had to drop out of college. Oh, no, that's just terrible. Why would she have to go and do something like that? The truth is that she decided that it's not for her and that she wanted to do something else with her life. But, you know, Dot, she can always be so flaky. So, anyways, I just wanted to ask you not to talk to her for a while. I think she needs to learn the consequences of her actions. And so I just feel like if she was able to talk to you, then she wouldn't really feel like she'd done anything wrong, you know? I see. Well, then what is going to happen to the money that I sent to send her to school? No, oh, don't worry. I'll be sure to hold on to all that. And if she wants to go to a community college or something later, then we'll use it for that. You really think that I'm just going to let you get away with stealing all of that money just like that? No, Mom. It really isn't like that at all. I just don't know what Dot is going to do in the future or what she wants, but of course I'm not trying to steal. Philippe, I am sorry, but I can't put up with this anymore. I am cutting you off. Please don't ever contact me for anything ever again. Do you understand? Oh, wait, what? Mom, where's this coming from all of a sudden? You can't be serious, right? I've already heard all about how you told Dot that she wouldn't be able to go to college. No, I didn't tell her anything. It was all Dot. She was the one who changed her mind all on her own. Oh, really? Because that's not what she says, and she's right here with me. Uh, wait a second. You're telling me that Dot is at your house right now? That's right. A house that you grew up in, but that you are no longer welcome at. And your wife is here, too. She told me that she doesn't want to be with a husband who will treat her daughter this way. So it sounds like a divorce is in your future. 
Uh, wait, but I, uh, I don't understand. What's going on here? This can't be happening. What's happening is that I know you were trying to use all of this money to pay off your own debts. I heard that you owe something like $30,000. And you were really going to use your own daughter's tuition money to try and pay it. Mom, I don't have debt. This has got to be some kind of a mistake right now, you know? Don't you lie to me. Your wife did some digging around and showed me everything. I told you that if you pulled something like this that I wouldn't hold back, right? Mom, please, it's not like that at all. I just used a little bit of the tuition money, that's all. I just needed a bit of money, so I took a little dip, is all. Well, if you needed more money, then you should have gone out and gotten a second job. Stealing from your family is not the correct way to go about this. And just how did you accumulate so much debt anyways? Have you been gambling again? I just, I thought that I could turn Dot's tuition money into a much larger sum if I won big. I really can't believe you right now. You are such a disappointment. You took out money that you didn't have and it accumulated interest that you couldn't pay. Why didn't you just borrow what you'd be able to pay back? Even if it took a while, you could have done it. But instead, you had to steal from Dot. I just really can't even believe that you would sink so low to do something like that. Mom, please, I really am sorry about this. But you have to understand that I wasn't just doing this for my own sake. I really did want to try and provide for my family. Oh, please, you were always only thinking about yourself. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised that a gambling addict like you would go for double or nothing with your daughter's college tuition. But now, you are no longer a part of this family. Do you understand me? Please, you have to forgive me. I'll apologize to the girls. Just please, don't do this to me. Dad is dead, so if I lose you, I'll have nothing. And you are my only son. But I know that this is the way that it has to be. Besides, it's clear that you were much more interested in money than family to begin with. It's not like that at all, okay? Of course I love my family, and I would hate if you all left me. You should have thought about that before you caused all of this trouble for us. I mean, you literally even took your own daughter's hard-earned money from her job. If your family is having any financial trouble, it's clear to me that it's all your fault. I promise that I will never, ever gamble again. I won't ever cause any trouble to my precious family ever again. So please, you have to help me out here, Mom. You have to tell my wife and daughter how sorry I am. Tell them that I'll never hurt them again. I just, uh, I just need a little bit of help with all this debt. Surely you can understand that. I told you that you aren't a part of this family anymore. You tried to crush your own daughter's dreams all because you have no self-control. You promised me that you wouldn't get back into gambling, but I know now that that was nothing but a lie. You made a promise, and now you've broken it. But I really do promise that this time it's going to be different. Please, Mom, you have to believe me. It won't happen again, I swear. That is exactly what you told me the first time, and we know how that turned out. But I just can't forgive you again. I know that if I did, I would be putting not just my own money on the line, but I'd be putting Dot's future on the line, too. There isn't going to be a next time. I'm so, so sorry. I should have told you about the death from the very start, but I didn't want you to get mad at me. And now I've gone and screwed it all up. That's right. You did screw it all up. But it's a good thing that I found out about this before things got any worse. If Dot actually had been forced to quit college, then I would never, ever forgive you. Not, not that I'm going to now. Please, Mom, I really am sorry. You you have to believe me. I just need a little bit of help. Just a little money, that's all. Please don't kick me out of the family like this. You're all that I have now. Don't you get that? I think I've made myself quite clear. Now, if you have nothing else to say for yourself, I think that we're done here. After that, Philippe's wife, Dot's mother, requested a divorce. After everything was said and done, I found out that Philippe was actually about $150,000 in debt. 
It was also unsurprising to learn that despite the best attempts of Dot and her mom to keep the family afloat, it was, in fact, Philippe's rampant borrowing that was making things so difficult. He even had to sell his car to earn some quick cash, and as a result, had to take the bus to work every day. Because of that, he started showing up later and later and performing worse and worse at work. Finally, his bosses felt like they had no choice but to let him go. In the end, with no family to support him, Philippe was made to shoulder all of his debt by himself. As for Dot and her mother, they both moved into my house and Dot was able to continue her studies at college. We all agreed to block Philippe and cut off any and all contact with him. I can only hope that this experience has taught him a valuable lesson that will serve him well wherever life might take him. I'm just sad that I won't be there to see if it happens. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Hey, Reyna. Did you ignore my goddamn instructions again? How many times do I gotta tell you, we don't use the program with the word icon, we use word. You draw the ruled lines with word, you type in the numbers, and you input the numbers you got from doing the calculations with the calculator on your desk. At this company, it's standard to practice to make invoices and purchasing order forms with word before printing them out and handing them into the executive division. How about you start doing as I tell you for a change? What the hell's all this crap with this centralization feature you used? I don't know what it's for, and that ain't company policy. So quit it. Now. Hello, Brian. I take it you mean the centralized administration system. A notice stipulating its use was handed down to all employees by the parent company a few days ago. You should have received both an email and a paper copy. It was part of a drive to increase efficiency across the board by the system's developer through streamlining the workflow of all employees, regardless of whether they work at parent company HQ, any of our branches, or at different departments within the same branch. This is the form that we'll be using to input data from now on. If you don't learn how to use the app, it'll interfere with your ability to work in the manner prescribed to us by upper management, and the files you produce won't be cross-compatible with the rest of our systems. Huh? Heck are you babbling on about, woman? Nah, no way. You're the one who has to learn my style of working, not the other way around. You know, it's precisely arrogant crap like this that makes everyone hate temps. If you're so desperate for my wise instruction, then I suggest you fall in line and obey the company policy on document creation, you lazy temp slacker. I don't know what you're talking about, but it would appear the only one who needs technical instruction here is you. Huh? In fact, that's why I'm here. I was dispatched from the parent company after receiving a request to that effect. Huh? What am I reading? You delusional as well as moronic, you lazy temp slacker. Listen to me, lady. You're new at this company. And while you're in you, that means you have to follow the instruction and respect the authority of your senior workers. It's the law of the workplace. You might not like it, but we have our own way of doing things here. You don't get to pull new document creation methods out of your ass just because you don't like our process. Do you have any idea how much trouble you'll cause the company if you carry on ignoring the rules? I make myself clear? Good. I don't want to see you using anything but Word for data entry from now on. Um, Brian, all I did was create a piece of sample work based on actual data. Huh? Your department manager distributed paper instruction manuals on the new way of doing things to all employees earlier. So please kindly use that as your reference during all data entry work in the future. Of course, that means we'll be using the new system instead of Word, as is explained in the manual. What the heck? I'm not really saying anything that difficult, Brian. It's easy enough to understand if you just think of it as inputting numerical data into the new system using a calculator. Rather than relying on simply sequentially entering your results from the calculated data into Word, a method which is significantly prone to human error. The new system is geared towards collating the data with the pre-existing database to ensure a higher degree of accuracy and precision. Quit making me repeat myself, moron. Like I said, you don't have the authority to arbitrarily come up with your own systems. You have a way of doing things at this company. If you don't like it, then get the hell out. This isn't my system, and I didn't come up with it. 
Quit trying to upset the harmony of the company and fall in line, peon. This is why everyone thinks temp workers are a scourge on humanity. Should be eradicated from the face of the earth. Wow. Does everyone think that, Brian? Do they really? Or maybe, just maybe, is there a chance it's just you? Gah, forget it. I may as well be talking to a brick wall. I'm just about to come to the end of my shift, so I'll be going now. No. Wait. I'll see you tomorrow, Brian. Good morning, Rena. I hope you're well today. How are things progressing with your technical instruction of the employees at the subsidiary company? I'm sorry I haven't been around much to check on your progress. My schedule has been so hectic since I became CEO. Good morning. That's fine. I understand that you're busy. I'll be compiling and submitting the interim report tomorrow morning. Excluding one employee, the instruction is going swimmingly and things are moving along as planned. Excluding one employee? Does that mean what I think it means? Yes. I don't want to sound rude, but Brian from sales is turning out to be an even bigger nuisance than I was warned he would be. He's proven to be a huge thorn in my side. In what way specifically? The rest of the employees remembered everything I told them about the new centralized administration system impressively quickly, and it's safe to say they've now completely phased out the use of other apps. But Brian is dead set on creating documents with word and only word. He just keeps calling me a lazy temp slacker while ignoring everything I tell him. He seems to have no intention whatsoever of learning the new way of doing things. I see. The company is moving away from the old paper-based system, which used Word doc files for things like invoices and purchase order forms in a drive to increase efficiency and encourage an overall streamlining of the work process. So even if he does carry on using Word, we won't be able to use anything he creates. Right? I've explained exactly that to him countless times. But it seems no matter how many times I tell him, or how easy to understand I try to make the explanation, nothing goes in. If I'm not mistaken, Brian is 43 now? He joined the company when he was 39 through his personal connections with the former CEO. But to be honest, he's been like this from day one. I'm not sure if he thinks he's free to do what he likes because he's related to the old boss. But even if that was the case then, his uncle isn't calling the shots anymore. He really is a nuisance. Our company is already behind enough as it is on digitalization compared with the rapid advances our competitors have been making over recent years. The last thing we need is stubborn employees with old-fashioned, fossilized ideas on how things should be done, preventing us from making any progress. I'll only be giving technical instruction at this branch for another week. I'm really going to have to do something about him before I finish up here. It sounds like you're having a rough time of it. No, it's nothing. I'm just doing my job. If he persists in refusing to listen, we'll be left with no choice but to consider the nuclear option. Ah, freaking damn it. What the heck is it going to take for you to learn to use Word, lazy temp slacker? Hello, Brian. I assure you, I know full well how to use Word. Liar. I'm very kindly going out of my way to try and teach you how to do your job. But you don't put the slightest bit of effort into trying to learn. Imagine having access to a teacher as exceptional, and competent as I, and completely wasting the opportunity. You're teaching me? No, I'm definitely the one doing the teaching here. As I previously told you, I was dispatched by the parent company to provide technical instruction to all employees regarding the new centralized data entry system. What? Why'd you have to disobey me at literally every opportunity? Do you have daddy issues or something? This is the problem with lazy temp slackers like you. Nothing ever goes in until you screw up and learn the hard way. I was hoping it wouldn't have to come to this, but it's time you learned a lesson. <laughs> How'd you like them apples, bitch? Told off and double slapped in the face in front of the entire company at the morning meeting. Uh, first, I went in with the beautifully executed open hand slap, marvelously followed up by the breathtaking back hand. Boom. Double whammy. <laughs> Apparently, there was a mistake in the numerical date on the documents I submitted, because Word, and not the new centralized system, had been used to compile them. Yep. And you only have yourself to blame. That's not my job, Brian. I'm tired of telling you now, 
but you were clearly instructed to use the new centralized system for all data entry tasks. I'm tired of telling you that you don't get to arbitrarily invent your own way of doing things, because our company already has rules in place for stuff like this. No, Brian. This has nothing to do with me personally. All employees were notified that this is how we'd be doing things from now on. Quit barking orders at me, you filthy, arrogant temp scumbag. You getting bitch slapped just now was the punishment for your mistake. This is what you get for ignoring my instructions, you filthy temp slacker. Do you understand how powerful I am at this company compared to you? I'm a full-time employee. You're not even worthy of breathing the same air as me. Brian, by any chance, do you think I was dispatched here by a staffing agency for temp workers? Huh? Why would you ask me such a dumb question after all this time? I know exactly why you're here. Because you got sent by the parent company to receive technical instructions for being deemed totally useless and incompetent for your constant, never-ending failures. They probably felt too sorry for you to fire you, since you're so pathetic. <laughs> oh, luckily for you, I took it upon myself to be your mentor, but all you've done is throw it back in my face. Why'd you think I'm so kindly trying to teach you how to do data entry using Word? If I didn't teach you you'd probably end up getting depressed and killing yourself because of your constant failures. You have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Huh? I'm the parent company's technical advisor. What? I'm a full-time employee at the parent company's head office systems management department. I didn't come from a staffing agency. I'm a full-time employee, and I was dispatched here by the parent company as a technical advisor to provide instruction to all employees on the use of the new centralized data entry system that was recently implemented. Huh? I was told you were notified of everything I just told you in advance of my arrival. Wait, uh, what? Besides, due to the nature of the work we do at this company, we never use temporary workers from staffing agencies. The entire company consists of directly contracted full or part-time workers. Don't you think it'd be strange if an agency temp suddenly showed up one day out of the blue, despite the company having zero precedent for employing people on that basis? Um, uh, what, what, what? I'm currently in the medical office, having an ice pack applied to my swelling cheeks after being slapped. There's a small cut on the inside of my mouth, too. So? What's your point? The company president would like to see you. Please make your way to her office immediately. The pr the president. Oh man. Hey, Reina, what the heck did you go and do, and what are you gonna do to make up for it? I got told to stay home and not come into the office thanks to you. The president told me she was gonna think about how to deal with me, but it's pretty much a dead certainty I'm gonna end up getting fired. I'm gonna be unemployed again soon at this rate. I can't go back to being jobless. God damn it, to think I finally landed myself a stable job after my uncle, the old CEO, pulled a few strings and got me into the company. What are you gonna do to make this right? Hey, stop ignoring me. I'm talking to you, idiot. Say something. Hey, Reina, wait a minute. You have the hots for me, don't you? I was thinking about it all evening last night and it finally dawned on me. How did I not realize it all this time? The reason you were so rebellious and domineering with me was because you are playing hard to get, wasn't it? In that case, the solution here is easy. You're gonna get married. You're gonna be my provider. Yeah, think about it. It's entirely your fault I lost my job, so now you're gonna make up for it by putting a roof over my head, feeding me, clothing me. If you swear to give me your hand in marriage and provide for me for the rest of your life, I'll forgive you for getting me fired. Alright, sweet. Now we've agreed on our future together, uh, it makes more sense for me to voluntarily resign than let them fire me. This way, if I jump before I'm pushed, I still get to keep all the money I've been putting into the pension scheme all these years. <laughs> I bet they're going to be so frustrated when I hand in my resignation before they can fire me. <laughs> uh, they did tell me I wasn't to come into the company while they were deciding on my punishment, so... Guess I'll have no choice but to leave my resignation in the post box. <laughs> What the heck? Reina, god damn you. You're already married? Explain yourself. When I reported my resignation and our engagement in the office group chat, 
They told me you're already married with kids. How dare you trick me, you cheating worm. Would you be quiet for once? Excuse me? Rina didn't say a thing about agreeing to marry you, did she? Huh? Sorry to message you from Rina's phone like this, but I didn't have your number. Who the hell are you? Penny Williams, CEO. What? CEO? No way. Y you can't be. Whether you believe me or not makes no difference whatsoever. Your abuse towards Rena was getting so severe that I felt I had no choice but to intervene personally. But, but Penny, why would you do that? Don't you have more important things to do being the CEO or all? Rena is the daughter of my childhood friend, and I've known her since she was a little girl. What? The reason Rena was dispatched to your office as a technical advisor was because I put in a request with the parent company that she be the one to deliver instruction on the new system. Rena... Rain, Raina's friends with the CEO? Yes, but let me make it clear that the reason she occupies such a senior position at the parent company has nothing to do with me, or personal connections with anyone else for that matter. She got to where she is with nothing but hard work, dedication, and commitment to her responsibility. Um... Oh, that reminds me. I understand you've decided to resign voluntarily. I'm hereby notifying you that your resignation has been received and accepted. Leaving of your own volition may have been a wiser decision than waiting to be dismissed. However, you won't be receiving a cent of the money you've been putting into the pension scheme during your years at the company. All of it will be going to Rena in the form of compensation for the awful treatment you've subjected her to. What? Rena's husband was furious. Apparently, he is threatening to file criminal charges against you with the police for slapping her in front of the entire company at morning call. Criminal charges? Now that that's in the least bit surprising. Slapping your co-worker in the face was obviously going to make you liable for charges of battery or inflicting bodily injury, especially when there were so many witnesses. Oh my god, what the hell? Rena tells me her lawyer will be taking care of all the proceedings from now on. You'll be receiving a message from him over the coming days. God, I'm, uh, am I, um, am I gonna get, get arrested? My husband, who had been crazy worried about me throughout this whole ordeal, took care of everything involving the legal proceedings for me after that. As for Brian, lacking any knowledge in the ways of the world, he had no choice but to leave it to his parents to take care of his dire situation. Thankfully, and somewhat surprisingly, they seemed like decent, reasonable people, and all of our talks went by smoothly and without a hitch. They agreed to pay compensation, and with that, I dropped the charges against him. At first, my husband was so furious, he insisted I don't drop the charges, no matter what. But when, as part of our settlement talks, Brian's parents suggested they send their son to work at a company famous for reforming social delinquents, such as ex-cons, domestic abusers, and drug addicts. He decided to compromise, being moved by the genuine sincerity and remorse they showed during the talks. Who knows, maybe there's hope for Brian to become a decent human being yet. Apparently, Brian threw the mother of all tantrums the day he was to be sent off to the company's dormitory, and bundling him into the car proved to be a challenge for his parents. But last I heard, while he is still going through some growing pains and the occasional stint of depression, he spends his days working diligently under the firm but fair guidance of his seniors at his new workplace.